Hi there, it's Sunny. So if you are new to my channel, I am a professional ballroom dancer and I'm here today to share with you uh, some of the things that go on behind the scenes in the real world of ballroom dance from the perspective of a very long-term industry insider. And so today the question I want to address is why on earth are ballroom dance lessons so darn expensive. It's crazy. So I definitely wondered, this is an amateur now that I'm a prof professional, I definitely um, see the larger picture. So I wanna share why with you today. Um, Cause there's many, many, many factors that go into this. Okay. And then to preface this, you know, every te teacher does charge differently. And generally speaking, you're going to get what you pay for. Um, you could certainly find a super cheap, I don't know, 20, 25 bucks an hour uh, lesson on, you know, Craigslist from someone who's never taught a day in their life, but I'm talking about decent lessons. And certainly by the time you get up to the championship level, you can be paying some pretty big dollars. The most I've personally paid, I believe was $250 for 45 minute lessons. And I took money. But anyway, um, let's get started on this one. So first of all, I graduated from what at the time was the most expensive private um, college in the country, private university. Um, and I rest assured, I have spent exponentially more in my dance training than I ever did in my undergrad. Okay. Um, so think of it in terms of when you're taking coaching, like, do you want a, uh, legal secretary to represent you in court or someone that graduated from the top of their class at Harvard and has a proven track record. So certainly you are essentially paying for all the money, not to mention years <laughs> of time, that that professional invested into their dance education so they can share that with you, okay? Number two. Um, when I attended the Blackpool Congress, one of the first times, um, one of the many presenters there, um, and the Blackpool Congress, for those of you who don't know, was held at Blackpool each year, which is the world's most prestigious competition. And the Congress is like two days of all day lectures and demonstrations by the luminaries of the ballroom dance world. Um, and anyway, I can't remember who the presenter was, but someone very prestigious in the world of ballroom dance, um, shared that um, part of the reason pros charge so much is the average professional in the world teaching quote unquote full time um, only teaches an average of 20 lessons a week. Um, and so why is this? Why don't they just book more? Um, and certainly when I was uh, a young single gal uh, that heals quickly, I, there are some weeks, honestly, goodness, I was teaching 60, 70, up to 80 hours a week. It was crazy nonstop. But mama not that uh, young anymore. So, um, and certainly if you abuse your body like that, you're, you're going to definitely um, decrease the length of your career. So anyway, just physically, it does take time to recover. Um, when you're teaching, particularly if, um, in my opinion, the better teachers don't just sit and talk at you. They actually um, show you things so you have a visual reference. They also, they actually will manipulate you through the patterns, dance with you, even if it means manhandling, so that you can feel what that movement is and just learn it that much faster, okay? Um, and so, um, ultimately, um, I have seen I don't think it's very ethical, but I have seen pros book more lessons and they compensate for that by dancing less. There was one person I used to work with that literally there were, he had entire private lessons where he did not dance with that person a single time. He would just sit and do stretches and talk about dancing, um, have watch, sit and watch them dance alone. And I was like, what are you doing? That's not really teaching them very effectively. And he's like, Sonny, he, and this was a professional Latin dancer, high level dancer. He's like, 
I'm not going to last in this industry, but a few years as, as is true with most pros, you end up blowing out your bodies. Like I want to be able to teach as long as I can and ride this pony as long as possible. Um, and you know what? I didn't even occur to me, but I'm like, okay, I guess I do the same thing. I just never really thought it out. Yeah. Now, certainly for me, I choose to book less lessons, um, and actually dance through it to this day. But, um, that's, a reality in this industry, okay? Um, and if you're a serious dancer, this is not a part-time job for you. I'm not, um, you know, a CPA on the side and then a professional ballroom dancer on the other. I have invested all of my eggs in this one basket of training myself to the highest ability so I can share that with the next generation, okay? Okay, number three. I touched on this a little bit, but particularly if you compete and, and specialize in Latin and all the top pros do, we all teach everything, but we really specialize in something, okay? Um, and especially if you specialize in Latin, it completely blows out your body. Like doing any professional sport, obviously it's not as high impact as for example, American football, where you're literally throwing yourself on each other, but um, it definitely takes a wear on your um, joints, on your ligaments, um, on your bones, you know, these, um, I don't know, I'm sure they exist, but I personally don't recall ever seeing like more a senior, you know, like 60 plus years, um, age level professional, even former world champions actually physically teaching dance, which is a shame. It's a loss to this industry. Um, but it does wear and tear on your body. And so generally, uh, really always, we really have to make hay when the field's ripe. So if we need to charge as much money as we can now, so that we have savings for when we retire, because we're probably just physically going to have to retire earlier than other industries. And when we do, we either have to rest entirely on that money that we saved while we were able to physically teach, or we will we'll need to have a ton of money in the kitty to reinvest in a future career. So I can go to college, get a degree in something and have a totally different career. Um, you, like most people, we probably don't want to, um, you know, be a janitor or, or flip hamburgers for the rest of our lives. So, um, this is also a reality you might not have thought of in terms of being a, a professional ballroom dancer, why we probably charge more for our time than you think it might be worth. Okay. Number four, and you might be surprised to hear this. Um, we don't just get to keep that money that we collect from you by a long shot. Okay, so if you are an employee um, by a studio, you might be earning 50% um, commission, um, which is honestly the highest I've heard of. If they pay more in your studio, let me know, in terms of being a, a, an instructor. So already half that money completely is going off the top and then taxes and everything else, okay? Most of us, and I am speaking from the perspective of being in the United States, where I am from, um, actually are independent contractors where we lease floor space um, for that privilege of teaching you. So we don't just get to keep that money. We are right off the top. We are paying per minute, essentially, to either reserve that floor or be teaching you or both. And we have to pay that right off the top. Um, secondly, um, when you are self-employed, at least in the United States, you have to pay for your own health insurance. And for those of you who have experience in this, you know that when you're paying for a, a singular health insurance coverage, it is way more expensive than getting it through a company. So that's another thing that comes right off of the top. Um, next up, we do have some unique, um, costuming expenses. I go through probably a pair of uh, ballroom dance shoes a month. Um, those are 150 a pop. Um, or costuming, um, you know, these things are expensive compared to the basic outfits you're going to um, wear um, if you're working as a secretary, okay? Um, next up, we are business people. We actually own a business, or at least I do, which means I have um, a business license I'm paying for each year. I have um, a website that I'm paying for um, both the, the 
content and um, that website. Um, I have to pay liability insurance for myself. And in any studio I've taught in, um, I not only have to provide coverage for myself, I must pay for additional insured for the facility. So they are no way liable if someone like falls and breaks their neck. That's on me, okay? Um, all right, there might be studios that don't require to do that, but obviously if you're a teacher, that's an intelligent thing to do because you never know what's gonna happen, okay? Um, None of us as professional ballroom dancers are, are really specializing in anything other than ballroom dance, okay? We, most of us are not actually experienced business people. We're not great with bookkeeping. So certainly for me, um, I've always hired um, bookkeepers and CPAs to do all of my bookkeeping, to report my quarterly taxes. Because yes, I and actually I pay a payroll company to cut me checks. I don't do that myself. I have to pay someone to do that. Um, so, and then they'll report the taxes for me, but all of that comes out of my check and then I pay them additional each month um, for that service they are providing. Okay, if we accept credit cards, we have to pay for credit card fees for that little machine that you're doing for the processing fee. Um, I stopped accepting credit cards a while ago because I realized I was paying over $1,000 a year between renting the machine um, and then getting a charge per transaction and then getting a percentage taken out um, for the credit card company and then my bank charging me a fee to process the credit card thing. So, um, you know, if you know of a cheaper way to go about it, let me know. Um, I don't personally use things like PayPal and Zelle because I do honestly report my income and I in no way want to mix that with personal income. It just makes it cleaner if you do everything through your company, either with checks or a company card, which I, I do have totally separate from personal. Um, so anyway, you might be surprised that of, of all these um, business expenses that we have that you just probably don't anticipate. You just think, hey, they're a teacher, they're making bank. Um, finally, um, any good teacher that I know, and this includes me, I actually invest a lot of time outside of that paid lesson, preparing for your lesson. Um, if I know you, if it's a wedding couple, I don't really need to prepare anything, but certainly for competitors, for people that would like to become higher level dancers, even if they're not actively competing, I don't just walk in and pull stuff out of my keister. Um, in my opinion, you're not getting your money's worth. I'm really re reflecting on, okay, what is this person ready to process next? Which figures are working best for them? Natural turning figures, syncopated figures. Maybe I need to tweak your choreography to make it look best on you and compliment you and your partner. And so um, we actually, there's a lot of unpaid time as a teacher, probably like any teacher. Um, in the world. Our industry is no different. So I hope that's been helpful um, insight for you as to why on earth we charge so darn much um, for those lessons. Um, in my opinion, it's worth every penny and I've certainly paid a heck of a lot more for other people's lessons than I charge for my own students. So in my opinion, it's still an excellent value for your money. And even if you're not taking from a high level and uh, instructor, uh, if you're enjoying your time, it's bringing you joy and good things to your life, totally worth every penny. Um, as I like to tell my students, well, healthier than a crack habit. So I hope that's been helpful. Please comment below, subscribe if you like my channel. I love that thumbs up button, I'm not monetized, so the only reason I do this is to provide content that might be interesting or entertaining or helpful for you. So let me know if you thought that was um, interesting or you learned anything new. Okay, I'll see you later, bye guys.